Hey. Hi, Jonathan. Thank you for joining me today in this episode of MSATP TV. Um, there are a lot of questions concerning the Maryland Saves program, and I am happy that we could have you just walk our members through the program um, requirements and answer some questions that our members have submitted. Um, so please feel free to just take it away. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. You know, um, I'm always happy to talk to, uh, you know, the accountants and the CPAs in the society. Um, and uh, Peril Services People Works has actually been really uh, at kind of the forefront of of figuring this all out. We've been part of the pilot program with Maryland Saves, and they have some really, really good people down there that really care about why they're doing this. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go over some high level stuff. And then I know we got a bunch of questions that were submitted uh, so we can go through that. So um, Maryland Saves is, is straightforward first. When we talk about this, especially from an accountant and a, a CPA standpoint, we really want to kind of put it into perspective of more of an employer and employee rather than a taxpayer situation, um, which is a lot of the questions about the taxpayer. In order to communicate this, we want to break it down to employer and employee. So first, um, Maryland Saves is a mandatory state retirement program, as you know. It was actually passed many, many years ago, but it actually never came to fruition. And then, boom, now here we're at with it. First and foremost, though, it's an individual Roth IRA for employees, uh, and it's not managed by the state, meaning like put into like a state pension fund or anything, which was a huge concern for a lot of people when they found this out, because some people have a, a very strong opinion that government does not manage things well. <laughs> so this was a really good thing. In the original legislation, though, it was actually a lot more strict. Uh, there was employer contributions and things like that that were in it. Now there's no employer contributions as of right now. Now the interesting thing about the legislation though is, is that the board of Maryland Saves does get to change the requirements as this program um, blossoms for a better word. So we do anticipate seeing an employer match having to come out sooner or later, um, but right now it, it doesn't. And Maryland Saves uses what we call a TPA or a record keeper called Vestwell. Um, Vestwell is essentially the TPA and the record keeper, and then the fund management is on the, on the side for it. So those two combined are how the plan is actually managed from a top-down perspective. Maryland Saves is just the, the compliance vehicle, if you would say, um, to make sure it actually happens with it. Okay. Awesome. Um, inside there, the big question that we get and, and is who's got to participate? And we got a lot of questions uh, from, from uh, some of the accountants and CPAs about this. So we like to use the terminology in, in payroll tax called a work location. A work location uh, is basically everything that you have to abide by as an employer as far as local labor laws, right? So um, especially in today's day and age when we have remote employees, right? So okay. for a work location is simply that I have somebody that's actually working inside Maryland, okay? It doesn't matter if it's a storefront, it doesn't matter if it's an office, or if it's a remote employee working out of their home office in there. That's what we mean by a work location, and so we have to abide by all the labor laws. That's why when we talk about unemployment and things like that, it's always based off of the work location, especially for remote employees. Now, every business has to register. Uh, and that's kind of like the confusing thing because people are kind of saying, well, what if I do this? No, you have to at least take the initial step of registering with Maryland Saves. And it doesn't matter if you are an S Corp or a C Corp and you're the only employee with it, right? L LLC tax as an S Corp, same thing, guys. If you have an employee or a business, you must register. And it doesn't matter um, if you have no employees in there because this is eventually going to link to the SDAT system, which is going to hold up licensing and things like that. So there's, we'll get into the compliance side later, but that's how it links up eventually with it. Okay, that makes sense. This is where people start getting confused with it, right? Because, uh, you know, they go, well, wait a minute, my single S Corp owner has a retirement plan on the outside or this or that. Well, it's very simple. They, if the business has a company sponsored retirement plan, that is a simple IRA, a 401k, a 403b if you're a nonprofit, anything that is a company sponsored retirement plan, they are essentially considered exempt. That means that the employer will not have to offer it to the employees, but they still have to register. Back to my, my previous statement, you have to register. <laughs> now, 
if you don't offer a company sponsored retirement plan, again, it doesn't matter if you're the single owner and you know, you're, you're taking payroll just for IRS purposes, you have to participate in your employees. That's what we call the non-exempt. So exempt, I offer some type of retirement plan through the company, non-exempt, I don't. And again, regardless, you still got to register with it. Uh, and we're going to get into kind of how that goes through next. But this is really the big one. Like you got to separate this. And I get a lot of questions trying to weave the line. It doesn't matter. You got to register. <laughs> so um, the enforcement, as I mentioned, is really when it comes down to the SDAT, right? So we see this a lot of times. So if you have clients that maybe have not paid their payroll taxes or they're delinquent in unemployment or they never got that rate notice and then now they owe unemployment, they hold up the licensing, whether it's an auto license, a, a liquor license, that's where this is eventually going to go to. Now, they're not going to do it right away out of the gates because they're trying to get the program moving, right? But we anticipate between year two, year three, somewhere in that time frame, they're going to start holding up licenses at that point because you have it registered, which brings me back to my other statement. Again, you got to register. Mm -hmm. um, the cool thing, though, is, is with those PPTs, right, we don't have to pay that $300 filing fee anymore. And some some people have asked questions, uh, you know, to you about, well, how does that work? You guys, I have no idea how it's going to work. My understanding is if it's online, if you're filing online, they're going to know that that business has it and they're going to waive it. Maybe they update the, the paper tax return to say, hey, did you register? Something like that's going to happen with it. But the whole crux of it is, is as long as you're registered, you'll get a $300 filing credit uh, towards that, that return. So that, that's kind of a nice thing because nobody likes paying that 300 bucks anyway, right? <laughs> so um, the, the administration of this is, it, it obviously we've simplified it for it. Um, the initial registration process isn't too terrible, especially if you're an exempt employer. It's you're just going to have to put in basic company information and things like that. But really, where it starts becoming more of a pain in the butt is, is if you are a non exempt employer. If you're not exempt, well, now all the employees have to participate. So we have to do the standard retirement reporting rules, which is census information, contribution information, new hire data, and then obviously going through and doing the updates. One of the biggest things that we see, and this is going to be particularly important for uh, accountants or CPAs that are processing payroll for customers, chances are that those customers aren't reporting date of birth to you. I mean, they don't report them to us. We actually had to make it mandatory and then call all, you know, 800 customers to get, you know, missing date of birth. The problem is, is if you don't have the date of birth, you can't complete the census and now you're stuck in limbo. So that's really where the biggest thing is, is, is now that we actually have to report additional information with it, now people that are doing payroll have to be more diligent about collecting information. And if your accountants deal with the small business type that we also see, small business owners are busy, they're not necessarily the best at HR or paperwork. So this is going to become where a lot of the problems are. You're going to try to start a registration and you're going to find out you can't complete it. Then you got to go back to the client. So again, it's not hard. It's just time consuming and tedious to get through it. But once that registration and that initial census data gets uploaded, then we got to go on to the, the, the maintenance. So every single time you run a payroll, you're going to have to upload contribution information as well as update any type of census data. That also includes if you have kids that are like 16, 17 working, and then they become of age. So you got to remember that, hey, we got to update all this information. So again, you know, with a traditional 401k or a simple IRA, it's pretty simple because the guy's walking around the office, you give him a piece of paper or whatever. Now that's not how this works with it. So all of those little admin things are starting to pile up with it. Mm. With the updating of the employee contributions, this is something that we've given feedback to uh, Maryland Saves and Vestwell with, and they're, they're trying to come up with a, a way to handle this. But essentially, Maryland Saves is going to be sending up an automatic email out to the employer when there's an employee update. The problem with that is, is these updates don't get sent out until four days prior to payroll. And also for new hires, it could take about 60 days to get them into the system. When an employee gets registered for Maryland Saves, there's a 30-day window of time between Maryland Saves and when the employee is active before anything can happen. So when you're talking about automatic systems, like with, with computers and stuff, well, if you automatically set up to take the deduction out of the employee, but the account's not open in Vestwell yet, 
now you have a problem. You have money that you've taken out that you can't contribute and things like that. So there really is a timing thing here, again, with the process of how we're actually administrating it um, from a payroll perspective. So that's something that's really accountants and CPAs that are processing payroll need to be cognitive of. This isn't one of these where you can kind of set it and forget it. There's little intricacies that are going to affect it. Um, the biggest impact for employees, and we'll get into what's an eligible employee. So first off, uh, you asked me questions about, hey, who is actually eligible, right? What is an employee? So first, they have to be 18. So anybody that's 18, it doesn't matter if you're part-time, if you're seasonal, whatever. OK, and it also does not matter if you work for multiple Maryland employers and there's going to be some little complications that we'll get into about how we balance all of that out. But again, 18, it doesn't matter if you're part time or seasonal. It doesn't matter if you're full time. You must uh, uh, opt in these employees and it's an automatic opt in. And this is really where we see um, the problems that are going to come from this outside of making sure you got a good process in place. Because what's going to happen is, is, is most small businesses don't have the resources or the information to say, hey, employee, this is going to happen, right? And then all of a sudden, you're going to get paid, and then you're going to see 5% missing from your paycheck. You do the math there. You're going to have a herd of angry elephants at your door asking for the money back, right? Yes. So, <laughs> so that, that's ultimately the problem. So the biggest impact here is the employee communication and education. And Maryland Saves has been struggling with getting out the, their marketing material to let people know about this. Mm. They do plan to have you know, radio, TV ads and stuff like that, but we haven't seen it yet. So not sure when that's going to come in. This does come into effect September 15th. So... Mm -hmm. You know, there's going to be a lot of surprise employees uh, if the employers don't communicate with it. So that's really got to be the, the big one is, is communicate, communicate, communicate with it. Now, as we get into like where the money goes, so there's a lot of questions about how does this work with a Roth IRA with, you know, um, annual compensation limits and things like that. All of the rules of the IRS rule set follows the Roth IRA. That it includes your compensation limits, that includes your annual contribution limits and everything. And with employees that may have multiple Maryland employers, it is on the employee now to balance that. It also is on the employees, if they have an outside Roth already set up, they need to make sure they go in and they opt out or they adjust their contribution so they don't exceed the annual limit. So a lot of this tax knowledge that a lot of the accountants were asking us about with this, it's really all put back on the employee. And that's why when in the beginning I said, let's not talk about a taxpayer, we need to talk about an employer and employee relationship instead. So the first thousand dollars is going to go into this rainy day fund they call it the work life account. Okay. Um, the work life account is simply just a rainy day fund that they can dip into for any reasons. It does not have any bearing on the Roth IRA rules. After that first balance hits a thousand dollars, then the next uh, contribution amounts go into the Roth up into the limit. So whether it's 6,000 or 7,000, depending on their age and things like that. But the employee is the one that has to manage this. The, the employer cannot go in for the employee and do something. So that's really where we're going to see a lot of problems, especially from a tax planning perspective, or, you know, when you have to do the taxes and you find out that the guy's got two Roth IRAs and he's exceeded the limits or his, or his compensation is too high. With that, it really it comes down to, again, communication. Yeah. And it's up to the employee to jump on there. Um, a, a couple of the things with this, which is interesting, is, is that they do have it set up to automatically increase the contributions by 1% a year. So if they start out with five, well, next year it's at six and it's, it taps out at 10% currently. But remember, the Board of Maryland Saves can change these rules whenever they really want to with it. Now, I don't foresee them changing it immediately, but you know, the reason why they're doing this is because of the retirement problem in America right now, right? Mm -hmm. You know, there's, you know, most people are living paycheck to paycheck. I think the annual savings they said is $5,000. Well, these are some of the issues that are popping up with it, right? And, and again, only the employees can make the changes, which is really where it's at. Um, again, our biggest thing going through this pilot program was employee anger. That was really the issue with it. And I know um, you know, the, the accountants and CPAs listening are probably thinking, well, wait a minute, no, this is going to play havoc on all the accounting and everything. You're absolutely right. But from an initial perspective, it's going to be where the employee is mad at the employer. Um, you know, we had to have Maryland 
saves changed the way that the letter went out to the employee to let them know that it was a state mandated plan and that the employer wasn't forcing this. Um, so that's really where your, you know, your business owner clients are going to really need help with it. It's managing this, you know, the, the balance between the employee and the employer communication. And what we're telling people for this is really you, you need to direct people to the, the Maryland Saves website. Even as accountants, you can only educate, but you can't do. There's nothing that you can do on your, on your side of it. If I say, hey, 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 Gigi, you need to go do this. Now I'm depending on you to go do it. Um, I can't do it for you as the employer, as the accountant, as the financial advisor, whatever the case is. Uh, maybe you want to sit down with your clients and help them out that's on you. I, I'm not suggesting that one way or the other, <laughs> but th these are some things that, that we're seeing with it. Yeah. Um, some of the things that we mentioned with it, we're, we're, well, I'll be honest, most payroll providers are not talking about this. All they're doing is going out and trying to sell 401k plans right now. And, and my big thing, and I think I mentioned this to you earlier, was if the business doesn't have a retirement plan, don't just go out and put one in place, whether it's a 401k or a simple IRA and think, oh, well, we don't have to deal with this. There's got to be a business use case as to why we're putting in this retirement plan, not just to circumvent you know, the compliance and everything with it, because all you're doing is, is replacing one set of compliance with another set of compliance. But what we're seeing is from Paychex, ADP, and a ton of 401k providers, they're just calling nonstop, trying to get people to enroll in this. So, mm -hmm. you know, depending on what payroll provider they're using for this will really dictate kind of what has to happen. We're handling all of this for our customers. Um, for accounts and CPAs that are using QuickBooks, I, I don't really know what to tell you with that. There's going to be a lot of manual work for it because there's not a really good integration with it. And the integration products that are out there are, are actually fairly expensive when you, when you put into what they're actually doing. Um, but every time that you run payroll, you're going to have to submit these contributions, these census information, and all these updates. So there is a lot of ongoing uh, information that's going to have to, to happen with this. Um, you know, before we get into the questions, uh, Gigi, I, I just want to let you know, your guys, you guys can reach out to me, but you know, many of you guys have known me for many years. Um, you can send me an email, call us, you know, visit us on our website, and, and we're going to have all of our employee info guides um, posted there so they can download them as well as the copy of this slide deck um, for it. So you'll have access to the webinar, the slides, and all of our employee and employer FAQs for you. Um, Maryland Saves uh, employee document is a little bit long. Uh, we've tried to condense it to just the, the main points to try to help people out with it. That's great. So, um, do you want me to get into some of the questions that were asked? Sure, let's dive right in. Okay, so um, one of the questions said most Maryland employers are going to be required to offer their employees some sort of retirement savings. Um, yes, the, the, that's the whole idea of it, but it's not that the employer has to offer a retirement plan. They just are going to have to offer, again, Maryland saves or a retirement plan. But again, back to my statement, make sure there's a business use case and you're not just opening up simple IRAs and things like that for it. Um, we also do anticipate seeing some of the rules changing. So for example, um, there was a bill and didn't, it didn't pass. It said, hey, they all employees have to be automatically enrolled into 401ks and it could only be like a 30 day window and stuff like that. So again, you don't want to trade one set of compliance for another with it. Um, some of the questions are, are about just contribution limits as well as co uh, compensation limits. Uh, they, this is a Roth IRA. It's an individual Roth IRA, which is subject to all of the standard IRS rules. That, uh, that's your withdrawal rules, your compensation limits, as well as your contribution limits. Um, that's, that's kind of the thing with it. So you're going to want to reference those IRS rule sets for that. Um, one of the questions we had come in was is if, if a Maryland... Uh, employee has multiple jobs, how does that work? Well, Vestwell is going to basically merge that account. So if, if uh, I'm working for Gigi and I'm also working for, you know, Scott down the street, Maryland, you know, both of the employers are required to let them know that I'm working for them and Vestwell will merge those accounts. So the contribution will go to a single account, but the employee still has to govern the limits. So again, a lot of this gets put onto the employee to limit it. One of the things that we are suggesting is, um, you know, have the employee just contribute from one employer and not the other. But really, outside of that, there's not a lot that we can do from it. The employee's got to uh, take action on that and, and actually be educated with how it's going to work. Um, 
the another question we had was about the standard savings amount, right? That the work life or the rainy day fund is what, what they're calling it. That's the first thousand dollars. So that first thousand dollars is going to get plunked in there. Uh, and then they're going to be able to access that from there. If an employee, uh, the question was an employee, if an employee changes the standard savings amount, how will the employer know? Uh, as I mentioned, there is going to be an automatic email update to the employer. Um, I don't know how well that's going to go with most employers because they get tons of emails, <laughs> but we'll see. Uh, there is also an option for the employer to add what's called a team member onto the account. Uh, so when we register all of our customers, we add payroll services as a team member. So that way we're getting all of these updates and we can put them through the appropriate workflows. So that might be an option if you are actually uh, an accountant or CPA processing payroll. Maybe you do it that way or something like that. Same thing with employee opt-outs. I've got a question about uh, if they opt out, they're going to get that. If they opt back in, they'll also get a change notification. So any type of change, whether it's opt-in, opt-out, or whatever the case is. But remember, if the employee doesn't take action, it's an automatic opt into the program at 5%. Uh, what we have tend to have found during the pilot is those employees that didn't do anything um, took action after they got money out of it. Uh, the, process, the process for getting that money back out is, is a little bit um, tedious. So the employee is going to have to call Maryland Saves. They're going to have to work with Vestwell and see how all that plays out. So again, education and communication is going to be your best tool to kind of prevent this. Um, so uh, we got a question, can, uh, can an account be established for a self-employed person? Um, yes. Like if, again, if they're on payroll, then it comes out. If they're an LLC taking guaranteed payments, that's not going to, to happen because there's no payroll. This is all through payroll deductions for it. Um, maybe Maryland Saves and Vestwell changes that later to open it up. Uh, obviously, their goal is to increase um, all of the uh, uh, all, all you know all of the participation. Let me stop sharing my screen there. <laughs> maybe better um, for it. So, but as far as we know, as of right now, they can't. But they might open that up later because I know they were talking a lot about gig workers and 1099 employees and things like that. Um, it says the employer, if the employer registers in 2022 and they get the get a credit against their annual personal property uh, fee on the 2023 filing. Yes, that's correct. It does not get applied to their 2022. It will go into 2023. It's not going retro for the credit for that. Um, and there's no refunds or anything like this. Guys, remember, you got multiple state agencies trying to work and do all of this. Don't think that they're going to try to do something. You go, well, hey, let's just put a credit here. And it's not going to happen. <laughs> um, another question came in about uh, employee eligibility. Uh, it's not, it does not only cover full-time employees. It's part-time, <laughs> seasonal, and anybody that's over the age of 18. That's, that's the big one, okay? Um, there's a question about the, the Roth IRA. Does it help satisfy the five-year time period uh, before withdrawals can be penalized or be penalty free? I, I'm not a financial planner when it comes to that. Uh, again, it follows all the IRS rules for that um, with it. So if there's the five-year penalty, then yes, they would get penalized for pulling that out of the IRA and everything. Um, again, all of the rule sets, the limits and everything go off of the IRS uh, uh, rules already in place. So that's all the questions that I have here, Gigi. Do you have any other ones that came in? I do not. That was it. Um, well, I, I, you answered them very well. And um, hopefully our members obviously get the, you know, the information that they um, were inquiring about. Um, thank you so much for explaining that. Um, you know, it's taught me uh, some things as well. So thank you. Um, and I do urge our members to reach out to you if they have any questions or concerns or, you know, if you can be um, offer your expertise when it comes to this, that would be great. So I, I urge our members to reach out to you. Uh, thank you so much for that. That was great. Absolutely. And we'll have all of our FAQ guides and employer guides on our website. Again, that's payrollservicesllc.com. We're actually going to have a nice little button up at the top. This is Maryland Saves, and they'll be able to click it and download um, the employer and employee info guides that we did. And we also have them in Spanish for the employees as well. Perfect. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Absolutely. All right. Have a great one.